Let's look at the difference between a coupled and decoupled flight. Okay, this is your spaceship. So when you switch coupled on, your thrusters will attempt to zero out the ship's position in 3D space. So this represents strafe up thrusters, strafe down thrusters. There's two more in the three-dimensional space, which I'm not going to draw here. So that's what coupled does when you're just hovering in midair in the atmosphere. Now in decoupled, your ship basically just falls down with gravity. And the only way to stop it from falling is two ways, basically. You have the VTOL lift, and you have the forward translational lift that generates lift by the airflow coming in from the front. We got that's generated by the VTOL thruster. And you got this vector, and this is generated by the airflow coming in from the side. We got air coming in, and that's what aerodynamics simulates. You got the airflow coming in, and as long as you fly through the airflow, it gives you lift depending on the configuration of your ship. Now, what's the difference between those two modes? So the main difference is, is the following. Now this is decoupled, this is coupled. Okay, now this is the amount of happiness you get when you fly decoupled. Okay, all this this happiness, the z-axis is happiness, and y-axis rather. Now compared to that, in coupled, um, the amount of happiness you get is about. It actually goes below the paper, but that's that's all the space we got for that. And during this video, I would like to show that decoupled flight can be a lot more fun than coupled flight, even for players who don't have a joystick. It also works with a keyboard and mouse. So let's get started. I'm going to try now to paint a reclaimer from memory. Ah, does it look like a reclaimer? Put the engines over here. Kind of looks like a reclaimer, doesn't it? Okay, so. Um, I'm using a reclaimer as an example because it's a really heavy ship and it requires various uh, systems you have to pay attention to when you're taking off or flying with it or even landing with it. Okay, so the first thing you have, you have your main thrusters. In retail configuration, you have to fly upwards. Those are represented by up vector like this. Then as you fly forward, you have the forward vector like this. Now, when you fly forward, you have translational lift. And that simulates the airflow coming in from the front, going around the ship, and creating lift. And the game simulates that actually quite well for a game that's not supposed to be a flight simulator at its heart. So while you're flying forward, you need less upwards thrust to keep your ship level the faster you fly forward. For example, if you would be flying a reclaimer and you want to fly it level, you would have to hold it um, vertical thrust full up, take off, 
And then later, if you switch the configuration to retail, uh, the retail away in this direction, then you lose most of the, the power from this thruster. Then you have to use forward thrust, and then it combines basically the forward vector with the lift up vector, which then creates somewhat of this vector. But the problem is, it's still going to drop about this direction because it's too heavy to fly like that. So what you actually have to do, you have to rotate the whole reclaimer upwards like this. About an angle of, uh, I think it was 13 degrees AOA. And you can actually see that in the cockpit when you have the, the pitch ladder, that's those lines over here that you see. They indicate, for example, 2, 10, 0, and you have to be, you have to keep your your um, boss side center to that, and then you can fly your reclaimer basically low. Okay, now let's look at landing approaches. Okay, let's say you have a, you have a ship over here. And here's your landing pad. Now, as you approach a landing pad from, from a distance in flying decoupled, you have mo mostly forward speed, which means you have mostly forward speed. And you have a small amount of VTOL. Depending on how your ship is and what the atmosphere conditions are, you have a small amount of, of VTOL upwards, which gives you, which gives you actually, again, I'm oh, sorry, which should give you this vector. Well, because gravity also wants her money back. She's going to push you down, which means the whole ship um, is going to, going to be rotated from this angle. And you're going to actually slightly drop as you're flying um, with that configuration. Now, as you approach a landing pad from a, few, uh, from a few kilometers, at some point you want to start slowing down so you don't have to abruptly slow down when you end up here. So what you do, like halfway from... Your, your start of your approach. Basically, take your ship again. What we're doing here is you nose up slightly. Basically, you trade your nose up a bit. And then you give it some VTOL thrust. Just VTOL thrust. You let go of the forward thrust, you zero it out, which means no forward thrust. You just give it some VTOL thrust in that direction. If you have track IR, look out of the side of your ship to see if you're slowing down. So as, as you're doing this, your ship gets pulled in that direction. Gravity still pulls it down a certain amount. And ideally, when you get some practice, you just have a nice forward drift while remaining a level. That's a trick um, if you want to slow down. The most elegant way or to know if you did it right is you basically keep drifting forward, but you're slowing down with your nose up. If you give it too much up thrust, you nose up and you fly up in that direction. So ideally, you get a, a slow drift cone. Then you drift over here. And then you should be almost at a landing pad. Okay, now you start leveling your nose down again. And you reduce, you still have a VTOL thrust, but you reduce it from here. You make it smaller. Gravity um, starts pulling you down more. And then ideally your trajectory is going to be tap, 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 tap. And your landing gear should hit the pad and you land it. Uh, one more thing I want to mention is I'm writing this as the, the fix from a 311 um, R patch is active. The problem with that patch, it basically added um, coupled mode into decoupled and your gears out. So it might mess with the landing approach if you're not aware of that. So if you want a complete landing approach where a couple doesn't mess with you, keep your landing gear um, folded up until the last moment before you touch down. So to summarize, during this approach here, when you're about halfway into your landing and you're already starting to fly up from here, Here, at this point, you should deactivate all your forward thrust. And if you do it right and with some experience, it's going to be one elegant drift right onto the pad without actually having to do anything with the forward thrust. You, at this point, you're entirely controlling the ship by using your VTOL thruster.
And as I mentioned earlier, that works with the joystick and it also works with the keyboard. Even if you don't have a stick, you, just, you can just use space and use, the, use your mouse to orientate your ship, then you're flying it like a helicopter. And as an added uh, tip, if you get used to flying at a certain gravity and atmosphere combination on a specific moon or a planet, then you can also lower your thrust output. And then you have finer control over how much thrust you want to actually push uh, into your VTOL. Uh, this concludes the video on decoupled landing in VTOL, and as always, thanks for watching.